Uh, I'm here with Smile and Sam Alvey. As I forgot to mention or left out last time, he is the Karate Combat Heavyweight Champion, Smile and Sam Alvey. Sam, yeah, man, doing, I should have brought my belt. I, I forgot my belt in the house. I should have brought that out, just to have it slung around my shoulder, just ready to show it off to the world. I mean, yeah, I'm so, you got to carry that thing everywhere with you, right? For, you know, for the week after I fought, it didn't leave my waist. After the fight, I went to the hospital for like a nine-hour trip. The belt stayed on my waist the entire time. Yeah. And then, obviously, you're having to get that thing through the airport and things. That seems like a bit of a mess. Hey, it was, they loved it. They, everyone was asking me about it. I was telling my hand was all wrapped up because I broke that in the fight. And I was just, everyone loved seeing me smiling as big as I was. Of course. Even bigger than usual, right? Even bigger than usual. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, um, it's been a few weeks since that fight, since winning the title. It was your second fight in karate combat. Reflect on that fight a little bit and just talk to me about this experience being with karate combat now. Yeah, so karate combat was the reset my career needed. Uh, you know, I left the UFC on a bit of a skid, even though I argue with like half of those losses. I, I think I won most of them or should have won most of them. But anyways, I, I got out of the UFC and I started on the regional circuit and then I found Karate Combat. I said, I need to do this. I will win this tournament. I will win this championship. And I started bugging them, trying to get them to let me in. And we made it happen. My, my first fight was in the Dominican Republic. Had a beautiful knockout. Took me about a minute and three seconds to get. And then um, after that, I impressed them so much with not only my personality and my way to promote the fight, but the fight itself. And so I said, Sam, we want you as a light heavyweight champion, or at least give you the opportunity. So they gave me the shot at stepping in that pit and, um, and fighting one of their, you know, current champions. And I won. That you did, my friend. Um, like we said, like we touched on before this, um, this is something you visualized though, isn't it? You sent that tweet <laughs> out a long time ago, or it wasn't that long ago as it turned out. You expect you didn't expect it to do it this quickly, but you sent a tweet out saying you were going to become the Karate Combat Heavyweight Champion or the Karate Combat Champion, and then you went and did it. You know, I think it was the, the first Karate Combat I found. It was uh, Raymond Daniels was fighting someone. I don't remember who he was fighting, but Raymond Daniels, a buddy of mine, he was fighting, and I just fell in love with Karate Combat immediately. Like, this is so fast-paced. I mean, there's... I love wrestling. I love jujitsu, but it is the, I mean, everybody will say it is the boring part of any fight. As soon as it hits the ground and we say, oh, okay, it's on the ground. You wait for it to get stood back up. Karate combat didn't have any of that. And they didn't have really the threat of getting taken down. So they, they went out there with the ability to, to throw whatever they wanted as fast as they wanted They get those feet moving. They get their spinning kicks. They get the hook kicks, the ax kicks, um, the spinning back. Fist. They could do whatever they wanted. And I was hooked immediately. Before the end of that first program I watched, I think it was like last April or early May, I was tweeting out there, I will be the karate combat champion. I'm going to make it happen. And lo and behold, we made it happen. <coughs> yeah, that you did. Um I want to, um, yeah, and after that fight, you, you had a bit of a call out for Darren Till, didn't you? Um, do you uh, we're a few weeks on now, so is that, are, are we any closer to that being a possibility? Do you know if Darren's been in talks? What, uh, what's the status of that? Darren Till, I mean, every time I, I tweeted something or uh, I Instagrammed it, he fired back. You know, he DM'd me, ah, you bum, I'm your you're a bum, you're a bum. And they said, all right, then sign the contract. He said, I'll sign the contract as soon as they pay me. So I, I think he's in talk to them. I don't know if it's going to happen, but uh, I'll just assume he's scared of me until I, – I will assume Darren Till is scared of me until I, uh, he signs that contract. <laughs> I mean, I mean, there's, there's no other <laughs> option, right? It's It's got to be it. It's got to be it. And actually, in all honesty, I love Darren Till. Years ago, I took a last-minute fight in Poland. Uh, he was fighting Donald Cerrone. Uh, I had a, I cut 42 pounds in 10 days, terribly tough weight cut. And then I fought and I fought terribly. The opponent wasn't very good and I still lost. Uh, we got back to the hotel and Darren Tell, who I'd never met before. He didn't know me from Adam. He came up to me and he, he gave me some words of encouragement. He said, this stuff happens, you know, we'll get better. Your baby's nice to meet you. And it always sat with me. He's like, what a nice dude. Now I didn't know who he was at the time. I just know he beat Cerrone and he came up and was just, I, I was, I was blessed to have had that moment with him. Yeah. yeah. And then I know I've heard you say before, you like fighting your friends. So I love fighting friends. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, you're both getting paid, but you, I can't imagine many people are saying they like they love writing their friends. But I mean, they, if you're making I, money, make, it works. I'm going to make money one way or another. It's either going to be, I mean, whether I win or lose, I'm making money. Whoever I fight, they'll probably lose, but they're going to make money. Why would I want to make an enemy money? I don't want to make an enemy money. I want to make someone I like money. Yeah. So we <laughs> talked about the tweet. We talked about the tweet you sent out, basically calling your shot at Karate Combat. How do you remember how long after you left the UFC that was? So let's see, I left the UFC in I think August. Um, I had talked with BKFC, bunch of cowards over there. Uh, I mean, the, nobody would fight me, and I I said yes to everything, and they kept saying, "Okay, next month, next month, next month, next month." You lying piece of shit. I none of them would would sign the contract. None of them. Would, it was it was they wasted a lot of my 2023 year with with mm-hmm. promises and. Then no intention of making it happen. Um, so it, it would. I, I wasted a lot of time waiting on them to you know to come through with what they told me they were going to. BKFC never, never did. So it was April and May. So it's that August to April is when I started talking to, or trying to talk to yeah. to um, Karate Combat. And it was probably June before they reached back out to me. Uh, and it was just a social media blitz. I was tweeting them. I was uh, messaging them. I was commenting on everyone's page. I was just doing the best I could to get their attention. And eventually I got it. And they, they were they were skeptical because I'm not a, I don't have the traditional karate background until I explained to them I do. I started in karate. That is my, the first place I ever trained was in the, the back of a karate dojo. Uh, I was in weapons and then we switched over and we started doing the karate. Mr. Metz was, was my head instructor at the time. And that's where I started. The first four years of my career was in a karate dojo. Once I moved out to, to Temecula, out to California, Tarek Safadine was one of my training partners and coaches. He's a black belt in Taekwondo and Kyokushin karate. He was my my chief, well, one of my chief uh, striking instructors. So my entire career has been taught by and instructed by black belts. And I was thrilled to be able to put on the line. And I promise, one of these fights, I'm going to start kicking again. <laughs> you mentioned Temecula. <laughs> California, there we got the main man. Other way, we got the main man Dan Henderson behind me on the wall. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm from the U- I'm from the UK, but I I like Dan Henderson. I'm not many Brits are going to say that after what he did to Bisbing, but I like yeah, that. It's what he did to Bisbing twice. Yeah, yeah, he won I, that I, second fight. Too. I think Bisbing won. Maybe I'm no, biased. We, we can you're agree. Biased. <laughs> you're biased. Bisbing doesn't lo- lose in Manchester. I understand. But <laughs> you look at a photo of the two of them after the fight. Bisping did not win that fight. I mean, he's your friend. I get it. He's your friend. I get it, man. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, obviously, we talk about quite a but I was going to ask when that kind of became a viable option to you. But I guess around when you finally got their attention, you mentioned BKFC. Were there any other kind of offers from the major organizations? PFL? No. Alator, no, probably I tried. Trying to I, I tried to bare knuckle box in Russia. And so Russia asked me or asked in general, said, hey, we need a uh, 205 ex-UFC fighter to fight in two weeks on Christmas Day. And I said, you know what? I'll do it. I, I, I meet, met all of their criteria. And then they said no. Or they, they just stopped getting back to me. They just kind of ghosted me. Said, well, what the fudge? I, that, that's, I, I am, you won't find a better match than me. I and so the bare knuckle boxing in Russia didn't happen. Uh, I try. I talked to everyone else I could in the states, overseas. Nobody would fight me. Uh, and so eventually, I found a, a B two, which is a, a promotion I've uh, commentated with for the last couple of years, and I love the promotion. They found a, a heavyweight guy, C- uh, Cameron Graham was his name. Cam Graham. Uh, he'd fight me at heavyweight. I said, "All right, I'll fight at heavyweight." So I weighed in at two hundred thirty pounds. He weighed in at two seventy five. And that was my my debut out of the UFC. I went in there, got a big TKO win, and then from there on, we moved to the to the UFC or to Karate Combat. Yeah, couple more on Karate Combat. Obviously, Asim Zaidi, president of Karate Combat, he's obviously someone that he's got a lot of attention lately. The way he likes to promote, what what's it been like working with him, and what have those interactions been like? So I've only met him about twice, and it was the week of my fight. And he seemed like a very nice man. He, he seemed like he truly enjoyed what he was doing, who he was doing it with, and how it was being done. And it was it was a lot of fun getting to just know him a little bit. I, I'm looking forward to talking to him here in the next few weeks. Uh, start, you know, once my hand starts healing up, I'll be able to start scheduling my first title defense. And I think uh, President Austin there, he'll be a, a good 
a good man in the corner for for me uh, negotiating and making the next fight happen. Perfect. Um, and just about that karate combat setting. I mean, like you were fighting on the moon. That's so cool. Oh, I love that was part of what I loved about it. The first time I watched it, yeah. it's always somewhere else. The first time I watched it, it seemed like you were in Coruscant. You know, if you're a Star Wars fan, it, there were flying cars in the background and there's stuff just it, it was such a unique look. And so I assumed that just watching on TV that when I got there, there's going to be green screens everywhere. There were no green screens. I don't know how they put that stuff up there. I, you know, <laughs> by the end of my fight, I kind of felt, well, maybe I'm on the moon. Maybe, maybe they found a way to yeah, make that happen. Never know. I mean, especially if someone gets knocked out, they wake up, they're going to be so confused. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, you talked about, obviously, Karate Combat being a reset of your career. Obviously, now you've had that success in Karate Combat. You had that fight in B2. But I think when a lot of people still look at you, they're going to see how your UFC career ended, those last few fights. Um, but now you've had that success again. How do you look back on that period? Uh, you know what? It, it is what it is. Uh, I was fighting the toughest organization in the world. Yeah. I took, if you look at my last probably five fights, I took each of them on short notice. Um, yeah. hey, shoot, one of them was three days notice up a weight class because my opponent had backed <laughs> out. It had happened. At the end of the day, I, I'm I'm in three video games. Uh, my character in UFC 5 is garbage. It is the worst character in the game. But because it's so bad, it's become a challenge for people to go through the career mode using Smile and Sam. So I'm still in their minds. People are still paying attention and playing me on their video games. So I, I'm okay with it. Uh, I, I know how good I'm a, I am. I know I could walk into any gym in the world and be the best or one of the best people in the gym. And if you're going to hate on me online, go for it. The more you talk about me, the more you talk about me. Yeah. <clears throat> so when you see people making certain comments, that's very much the mindset, is it? Hey, God has blessed me. I, I wasn't supposed to be a fighter. At least I didn't know I was supposed to be a fighter. I, I was I was a band nerd. I played trumpet until I started fighting. Uh, then they offered me $250 to fight against and I'm in and I stopped playing the trumpet. Um, I, I, I wasn't meant to be a fighter or apparently I was. The good Lord knows me better than I know myself because he opened this door and it just changed my life. It, it helped form my life, my, my life. I guess never say never, right? But do you think this is it for you in MMA? Now you've found a home in karate combat, or do you see you going back at some point? I no idea. I, I love karate combat. I am thrilled with everything they've done for me. I'm thrilled mm -hmm. with with every opportunity they're presenting me, and I look forward to fighting for them until until I can't, until they don't want me anymore. Uh, that there's, I've got a long career left. I, I know everyone says that, but I'm only 37. Dan Henderson fought until he was 45, so I've got at least that long. Um, as long especially as if you're more, especially if you're a heavyweight now, right? Especially as, you know, now, karate combat heavyweight is two hundred five. So I, I'm yeah. still I walk around two thirty, two thirty five, but I cut to two hundred five. Uh, I've had a couple of tough weight cut or weight cuts too, but I, I'm, I'm making the weight. Um, I, it, I I I love what I'm doing. I love who I'm fighting for. I love the opponents I'm fighting. So I, I'm not going to say never, but I, I'm a pretty big fan of what karate combat's doing with me. Yeah. Switching gears. <laughs> um, Back in 2018, you sparred with a man, Logan Paul. Yes. Yes. Um, obviously, that's around the time when this whole influencer boxing world is very much in its infancy compared to now. That was just now. before their first fight. Yeah, perfect, right? Um, I'm not going to ask you about the session you spent with them itself. I think you've talked about them at length and um, what you thought about Jake at that time, too. Um, but going back to that time, could you have envisioned what influencer boxing has become just being around those guys not in the sense of their skill but maximizing their audience in this in this realm which was completely different to what they were used to you know at the time more than their ability to promote boxing or promote the wwe more than any of that i didn't know how influential social media was i didn't yeah. i knew they had more money than god i i was at their house and good god they might have more money than god <laughs> doing dumb shit on YouTube. Like, have you ever watched their YouTube stuff? It's not good, at least not for adults. It's like designed for kids. But they have they, they understand their art so well. And I'm not knocking them at all. It's that their art is their art. 
but the way they are able to monetize what they're doing and turn it into something else is incredible. And at the time, I had no idea social media was like that. I, I mean, 2018 was a million years ago. Uh, content creating is not what it is today. TikTok wasn't around. Reels wasn't around. YouTube Shorts wasn't around. None of that was happening yet. It was just YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. You just go out and have you know show the world what you're doing or show your friends what you're doing. Um, and they kind of, I mean, they more than kind of, they found a way to, to open up this, this landscape to everyone. And now everyone and their brother is some sort of, you know, at least they say they're some sort of content creator, but they really led the way with it. There were one or two other guys in there with them, but between those two, Logan Paul, particularly, they, they found a way to make, make social media a huge, I mean, the billions or trillion dollar industry it is. Yeah. Um, speaking of Logan, I know you. I know you've talked about your pro wrestling aspirations going back a while in interviews. Have you done any work <laughs> towards that now? Have you trained at all? Have you spoken to people? Where are you at on that? I'll say yes, but nothing really. Nothing really. I my yeah. my plan is if I get big enough in karate combat, big enough in WWE, big enough in whatever WWE will want me. Uh, so I'm doing all that. I. I I've been training my whole life. I, I can take a bump as, as well as anyone else. Uh, I just really enjoy the opportunity, and so I'm hoping I get to do it. So even if I'm even if I'm running for president someday, and they bring me out to get you know to to stun somebody, I'm in. I, I want to get in that 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 ring more than I want to do anything else. <laughs> it, it, it it worked for Trump, right? It worked for Trump, man. Oh man, and I, I'd be fine with that. <laughs> um yeah um filthy tom lawler someone you go back with a long time he's killing it I'm oh a yeah big fan no, of he's, that guy. he's wonderful he, he's the he, he's a buddy uh, i'll call him a buddy we traveled the world a little bit together he and i and i i love him he is such a such a good wrestler such a such a fun person yeah are you a big fan going back to, as a child then or is it a case of more seeing? Yeah, guys I was an attitude era baby. Jump. I mean, I, I started yeah. watching around 99, 2000. Uh, I, I remember when Y2J, who is my favorite wrestler, Chris Jericho, I remember when he was introduced to the world. I remember the the, the lights went out, the boom, the, the bass dropped, and, and he walked out. Um, I, I remember it, and it, it, it was just, I mean, it helped shape my, my career, my, my life. And I guess that kind of helped you build a personality in MMA, right? Because one thing, I've got this on my list later on, but I'll come to it now. In the world where, you know, we've got Reebok or Venom shorts now, but Reebok shorts before, it's hard to stand out, yet you were always able to do that simply by smiling. It, it's a gift. I'm a chubby ginger kid that smiles a lot. I, <laughs> I am so recognizable, and I I, I mean, I, I'm no Sean Strickland, but honestly, God, I, 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 I made it to top 10 a few years back in the UFC. But I am still remembered by everyone. I still get DMs regularly. I, I get stopped in Walmart every time I go. So are you? Are you? Yeah, that's me, my man. It's nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Um, and I do think the WWE had something to do with it. I now teach my amateurs, my pros. I say, listen, winning fights is the most important. The, you know, the top of the win the fight. But as soon as the next, close to as important is what you do on that microphone. When they hand it to you, and you don't need to make anything. You don't need to be uh, a cringeworthy Colby Covington. You don't need to do anything. You don't even really need to do Chael Sonnen where he can't, I, I don't know, but I'm sure he's thought about it, like wrote it out what he's going to say. And then <laughs> I'm right. Or he's just a sharp wit. You don't need to do that. You just need to be yourself loudly. Whatever you, I'm a smiley guy normally. So when I'm in the ring, I am smiling. I'm not hiding it. I, and too many fighters, they get out there and whatever it is that makes them them, they hide it. They shut it down. They get that mic and they say, I want to thank my wife, my parents, and my team and looking forward to the next one. And they ask, well, who do you want to fight next? And then they all answer. Well, whoever, you know, you and and I will talk and whoever's next in line, uh, I'll make sure. It's like, no, nobody actually cares. Come out there and say, I want this guy. And then don't get it. You call out anyone's I, I i fought cam graham and i called out logan paul in the wwe it doesn't matter <laughs> you just want somebody to remember you said it you want to be able to go back and show that highlight reel to the world uh, and people don't understand that um very few fighters do anyways conor mcgregor chael son and those are the two guys that made it an art uh then you get the um, uh colby covington and the um uh, little guy the 25 champ um henry Cejudo, who went yeah. real cringy with it and i love the cringe i i really do like it they made cringy their own thing 
Uh, but it's not quite the same. Just be yourself. Sean O'Malley is a great a prime example of he was getting compared to Connor Connor uh, McGregor, and so he changed the way he is. He changed the way he's presented himself. He, he he's he's gone out of his way to make sure people don't compare him to Connor McGregor, uh, because it's dangerous to be compared to the guys who are better at it than you. And Sean O'Malley is somebody who's found a way to make his personality different from every everybody else's, but still more than than a lot of people's. Yeah, I mean, we got what, 500 odd fighters in the UFC now. Yeah, you've got to do, you got to do something to stand out. I'll bet you there's another that, guy. At one point, there was about 800 fighters in the UFC. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, and especially now, I, I keep saying especially, there are so many foreign fighters, fighters whose names I can't pronounce. Uh, and so you get it is so easy to get lost in the mix of Dagestanis and Japanese and Chinese and Brazilians. It's so easy to get lost in that mix. You have to find a way to, to, to promote yourself anytime you get that microphone, anytime a camera is pointed on you. I think of someone like Tom Aspinall, who he, he's just so laid back, but I mean, he's starting to show it a bit now with some of the stuff towards John. And like I said, the most important thing is to win. John Aspinall is winning. And John Jones is a perfect example of he has no personality. Like he, he's terrible on the microphone. He nobody remembers anything about him except that he ran over a pregnant woman, ran back for his cocaine. It, the only they only remember the bad stuff and that he never loses. I mean that's what they remember about John Jones. He never loses. He doesn't have to have a personality because he doesn't lose. Uh, and Aspinall he doesn't really lose either. He hasn't lost. I mean he lost. He, he tore his knee, you know, a while back against um, Curtis Blades. But other than that, he hasn't had a bad round. So sometimes, if you're if you're going to be that laid back guy, you got to win, and you got to win down. You got to win impressively. Yeah. You mentioned Sean Strickland, and uh, would be <coughs> remiss if we didn't mention him. He's obviously someone you're very close with. I know you've actually got some sparring footage going up on YouTube, right? Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the day of his fight, I'm releasing. I did five. It's actually six rounds, but I call it five rounds. Five rounds and a bonus round uh, of me sparring him. It was the week week before my fight, uh, and he, he was kind enough to let me into a, into practice with him, and uh, we we sparred. We sparred hard. Yeah. Uh, how do you think he fares stylistically with Drickus? I think he's better at everything than Drickus. I don't. Yeah. I, I I think Drickus is dangerous in the first round. If Drix is going to come out and he's going to he Drake 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 is going to MMA fight Sean hard round one. He's going to shoot. He's going to swing. He's going to mix it up. Try and confuse Sean. Sean will lose round one. Sean always loses round one. He doesn't care about round one. Sean's pressure will get to DDP by the end of round two. DDP will still w- start walking backwards. DDP will start getting hit. Start getting hit a lot come round three. I predict a TKO for Sean in round late round four or middle of round five. Drakus is going to start getting teed off on. Sean's going to find that range. And Sean's going to lose the first round. But by the end of round two, we're all going to know who's going to win the fight. Uh, and then by, by the end of round three, Drakus won't be able to keep his hands up. He will be tired. And I like Drakus. I keep talking so highly of Sean. Sean's a friend of mine, so of course I'm going to talk highly of him. But stylistically, Drakus isn't prepared. Nobody is prepared for the pressure that Sean brings. Sean has got this unrelenting, he's going to wear you down kind of pressure. Yeah. Um... I'm not going to take up too much more of your time. Obviously, UFC and USADA recently part ways. Mm-hmm. Um, just finally, before we wrap up here, I've been seeing some stuff online. Do you have any crazy USADA stories that you're able to share? <coughs> um, crazy. So, so I was always, the, the guy that, that um, tested me, he's, m- almost every time he had to test me twice. I, I He always joked I was the most hydrated fighter in the UFC. And I, I was just insane. I and mean, he, he, he loved, we always talked. I mean, we knew each other well because most of the time they show up, you pee in a cup and they leave because I was always so hydrated. I'd pee in a cup. It wouldn't be, it would be too hydrated. So we'd have to stick around and watch practice, maybe go to lunch with me. We'd have to hang out for the afternoon. Um, and it was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Getting to know him, getting to, he, he was an ex pastor. We, we were just talking all the time about, about God and uh, about peeing in a cup. Yeah. No 6 a.m. calls, waking up the kids, waking up the animals, nothing like that? I think I had one 7 a.m. where he got there, but I'm usually yeah. up by about 6, 6.30 anyways. Yeah. So, um, yeah, he, he showed up, knocked on the door. I think that was uh, he drew blood. But most of the time, he just met me at the gym on random days. Yeah, cool. That's nothing bad than if it's just at the gym. Um, yeah, I want to 
really thank you for taking the time today, Sam. Obviously, you're doing a lot on social media now. You're big on YouTube. You're big on TikTok. Tell us what you got going on. Yeah, but follow me, guys. My YouTube, I am gonna make. I, I got monetized like three weeks ago. I am yes. I spent a Perfect. year getting that done. I'm finally there. I'm posting more and more. I've got some big ideas. I just bought some really high end camera equipment. I'm gonna start doing some stuff. So follow me on YouTube. I'm gonna be doing a lot of sparring with a lot of famous people, a lot of famous fighters. So follow me there. We're gonna get some interviews done. We're gonna have a good time with it. And I answer questions more than any other UFC fighter ever has. I answer the people. <laughs> um perfect sounds good do you want to um plug your links where people yeah can find I mean, at smile and sam i think it's under my name right there at yeah, smile and there. sam uh on everything instagram tiktok uh, youtube twitter whatever i don't really care about twitter but you follow me there anyways yeah i see your name right here we have the magnanimous is there a story there no i just i, I was waiting on you to call back and i said yeah, i'll put that <laughs> into this time <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. I want to thank you for taking the time today, Sam. Best of luck moving forward, and hopefully we could see you in that karate combat pit soon. That sounds great. I'm looking forward to it, my friend. With Darren Till, hopefully. With right? Darren Till. Darren Till, answer this call, son. You're the bum. Quit calling me a bum. <laughs> yeah, do that in London. Do that in the UK. Yeah, well, We'd love true. to have you over here. I, UFC never let me fight in London. I tried. They never let me get over there. Yeah, we'd have loved to have you. I'm sure the London fans would have loved you. I would have so much fun. I would. Yeah. Have you ever been to the UK? Nope. I've been all over Europe, never never the UK. Damn. It's got, it's got to be next then. Get um, President Awesome and yeah, let's do it we'll make it happen. Let's get, the, let's get to the UK. Yeah. Thanks for taking the time, man. Best, best of luck going forward. Absolutely, my friend. Thank you so much.